So, the Ravens come out with the win here. 13 to 3 against the Carolina Panthers and improve to 7 and 3. After 10 games, 7 wins. Uh keeping the lead, keeping a one game lead on the Bengals in in the AFC North. Uh so pretty much the Ravens won, the Bengals won, Steelers and Browns both lost. So, hey, you would prefer a Steelers win so that the Bengals fall two games behind? It's a little bit tricky, but the Steelers losing is really, it, it, it's really not the worst thing to do. It, it's really not the worst thing to happen, honestly. Because, again, if the Steelers win, uh, you give them hope. They kind of have hope at what four and six at this point for them, and uh, we have two Steeler games. So them coming up with a, a them coming into these games with hope could be a bad thing for us. And also, the good thing also we could crush that hope. They could have hope the whole time, and and, and we can just crush it. When we play them. But also. The Bengals would be two games behind us instead of one. So that's the the downside of that really. And the Bengals win. Downside again. They're st again still one game behind us only. But the Steelers. Uh, they lose hope earlier. And the. Uh, Browns, Bills, you already know. Uh, their hope was already gone. So, hey, it, 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 it's really not the worst thing. Uh, it would have been better if it was... Uh, honestly, it would have been better if it, if the Bengals lost. But it's fine. It's fully good. So let's talk about the game here. The Ravens game. Uh, I was just talking a little bit of talk with the, uh, with the uh, scenarios here. And... Also, a Bengals loss, the earlier we can clinch the division. But, it's all good. It is all, all good. So, let's talk about the game here. Uh, as you look at the score, it was really low scoring. It, it was a low scoring affair. Uh, again, if you like defense, you enjoyed the game. If, you, if you're not an old fart, then you hated the game. Basically, so that's pretty much all I'm going to say at first about it. But let's talk about the defense first because I, I, I cannot wait till the end of the video to talk about the defense. I really cannot. The defense played lights out. The defense played absolutely lights out. Uh, I'm going to go through the stats before we get into the into some more comments. So, I'm going to pull up the stats for this game on defense. Uh, so, again, Patrick Queen led the team again in tackles with nine sacks. Roquan Smith got a sack. Jason Pierre-Paul got a sack and an interception. Kalise Campbell got a sack. M big hit. Big hit on Baker Mayfield. Uh, he, he actually got another a big hit on Andy Dalton two weeks prior. So... Yeah, uh, Marlon Humphrey, he has a forced fumble and an interception. Um, no, he doesn't have a forced fumble. He recovered a fumble, and he got a pick. Marcus Peters has a forced fumble. Uh, Marlon Humphrey could, should have had a touchdown, but all right, I guess. Uh, because, again, he, he, he recovered the ball, and they blew the whistle dead. Very weird play. Uh... But hey, the, the defense was really the spotlight of of this game. The defense played lights out. This is the first time, this is like, the defense has been playing better every week. Every week, since week two, every week the defense has been playing better. Big props to Mike McDonald uh, and, and, and his team to really, really get that defense to where it needs to be. Because again, the Ravens' philosophy... You spend a lot of money on defense. 
So it needs to be playing lights out. So again, it played exactly how it should be playing at all times. And again, in today's game, in today's game, we're like, you know, the league today, it does not allow you to play defense, all right? It's an offensive league. It does not allow you to play defense, which is why I don't like when we spend all resources on defense. But if we do it like that, it, it, it should work. We should be playing that way. But again, it is very impressive to, to only hold a team, no matter who, to three points. To three points in 2022 in a scoring league. In an era where, again, today's game, they do not allow you to play defense. The rules benefit offense way, way too much today. Especially through the passing game. And and also, talking about the Panthers, their offense hasn't been too, too bad. I, I mean, Baker Mayfield came, came in horrible. But without Baker, uh, they've really put up numbers in the past few weeks especially with key pj walker under center and you had deontay foreman deontay foreman has been a big big revelation for the panthers this year he's been he's been playing loud, lights out ever since getting the the starting job he's earned himself a job a starting job long term with the panthers so what we did here we, this is exactly the game plan i wanted for this team what we do, we, we hold Deontay Foreman, we stop their run game, force, put the game, put the game in Baker Mayfield's hands. And this is what happened. With the game in Baker Mayfield's hands, this is what happened. We, he, he crumbled. We put Baker Mayfield in a torture cham chamber today, in, in, in this game. We, we really did that. Baker Mayfield could not breathe. He was able to do absolutely nothing. And again, Baker Mayfield has only beat us, what, twice? He's won only one, once against Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson is now 6-1 and one against Baker Mayfield. And this is in their career, dating since he was with the Browns. Now he's with the Panthers. But again, he's... Again, Lamar owns Baker once again. And uh, I, I, we pretty much executed the game plan exactly to what I wanted it to be. We decided to go and put the game in Baker Mayfield's hands. And look what happened. He, he crumbled. Uh, the pass rush, we got sacks. We got to Baker. Their line isn't too good. Like I said in the preview, their own line isn't too good. But, but what did we do? We got at him. We had, I think, three sacks. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, Queen got half a sack. Kalias got a sack. JPP got a sack. And and Roquan Smith. So we got we got three and a half sacks on Baker. We got three and a half sacks on Baker. Uh, I'm I'm liking it. We actually got to him, and, and we pressured him a ton as well. We pressured him a ton. And the turnovers... Man, Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters and, and Marlon Humphrey. They've been locked down this game. Marcus Peters might have played his, his, best, game as, uh, his best game this season. Peters... This year, he's been he's been a bit shaky. He has been perfect, but he's been good. He hasn't been too too bad, you know. He's been he's been burnt a few times. I think he he's had the most trouble against Mike Evans a few weeks ago on Thursday Night Football. But again, he hasn't been bad. He's been he's been over a bit over hated by the fan base because of his little mistakes and shit. But hey, he he's really been he's really been fine, and Marlon Humphrey. Marlon oh, Humphrey's been perfect this year. There's nothing I can really say bad about Marlon Humphrey this year. He's been perfect. And again, this is the best for Marlon Humphrey, man. He, after what happened last year, man. And 
And what's funny is that last year, he wasn't even that bad. He wasn't even that bad last year. Like, he had a slight down year in 2021, yes. He was not healthy, though. And he was called washed. He was completely forgotten in cornerback quarter, lists. And he's been, he came back to All-Pro Marlowe. And he's easily a top five corner in the NFL. And there's no debating it. There is absolutely zero debating it. And really, he's been perfect this year. <coughs> and again, it's not talked about enough around the league. It was really... It was extremely talked about when he was struggling even, struggling even a little bit. He was, again, again, he was struggling even a little bit and he was getting scrutinized for it. But then now, look, he, he's been perfect this year and it's not talked about enough. People like talking, talking about Sauce Gardner, Tariq Woolen, Patrick Sertan. They've been studs. But Marlon Humphrey, he's been perfect. He's been perfect. So hats off to Mar Marlon Humphrey. Man, big personality, off the field, an incredible player on the field. Uh, he wasn't even that bad last year. But man, I, I, I love the Humphrey we're seeing this year. And, and, and I'm going to say it. This is the best Marlon Humphrey has ever been. This is the best version of Marlon Humphrey we've ever seen in his career. And that is crazy to think about. That is crazy to think about. Honestly, man. Extremely crazy. So, again, I need to dedicate a little bit on him. Love Marlon Humphrey, man. Y y y you gotta love Marlon Humphrey. But, dude. So, now. Uh, this is... We're gonna... We're going to need to talk about the offense here, okay? Defense did their job perfect. Really, really did their job. Offensively, let's talk about offensively. I'm going to go through Lamar's stats. Lamar went 24 to 30 out of 33, 209 yards, one pick. One pick, sacked three times. Rushed 11 times for 31 yards and one touchdown. And, yeah, man, 76.5 quarterback rating. So, hey. Uh, sharp game. Uh, Kenyon Drake, 10 rushes, 46 yards. Not as good as he was. Uh, Justice Hill, 7 for 30. Ricard, 1 for 4. Duvernay, 1 for 4. Receiving, 9 receptions for Demarcus Robinson, 128 yards. 6 for Mark Andrews for 63. Uh, Justice Hill, 3 for 8. Kenyon Drake, 2 for 7. Uh, what the hell happened here? Yeah, uh, they're saying Roquan Smith got a four-yard reception. All right. Uh, Devin DuVernay, one for three. Josh Oliver, one for two. Likely one for one. Mike Davis, one for minus three. So, again, Demarcus Robinson was, was the guy who showed out in the past game. Mark Andrews coming back from injury. Did okay. He did, he did his thing here. Uh, Lamar Jackson... He's, he's had his inefficient game. I think he's been... I think he was absolutely slinging that ball. And we had a lot of drops. We really had a lot of drops. James Prochet. Uh, I'm going to talk about him later. But yeah, uh, I think Lamar, he played a good game. The stats, he didn't have like 22 passing touchdowns in that game. But hey... He played a good game. He played a good game. He maybe had like one or two missed reads, missed throws. But man, he he, he he was really sharp. He was really, really sharp. And Mark Andrews being back didn't 
make him go back to him trying to spam Andrews. It didn't change it. He's really been... Uh, he has really been spreading the ball around. You know, sp spreading that ball around. So, hey, looking fine here. Uh, but again, man, the past game, Demarcus Robinson, and he he showed out. Uh, you would think that again. You would want to use him more, maybe. But hey, we had Duvernay going off in at the start of the season, and look what happened. Absolutely nothing. In the past few games, he's had like two receptions in the past two weeks of football. So hey, uh, we really see what they're doing, and we don't give him more opportunities. We we don't go with the hard hand. So. I can't really expect more. Uh, but yeah, uh, the offense has really sucked. Offense has really sucked. And on top of that, we lost Ronnie Stanley as well. Ronnie Stanley and Cal Hamilton are both both left the game. Ronnie Stanley, uh, they're saying he's going to the right direction. Same for Cal Hamilton. For Kyle Hamilton, they're uh, they're saying his knee is stable. So, all right, uh, we're gonna have more tests for Ronnie Stanley by the time I'm recording. But overall, better news, I guess, for the for their injury updates. But yeah, man. But hey, where where do I even start? Where do I even start, man? Because again, we need to talk about Greg Roman. We're gonna need to talk about Greg Roman, man. Because Greg Roman, this has been his worst game in terms of play calling. He has sucked. And again, like I'm saying, I'm going to always remind of what good things he's being talked about every single time something goes well with the team. Is it really him? Or it's always Lamar bailing him out? Lamar, Mark Andrews, these guys bailing him out every single time. Because even in even in plays that work, there's his mistake where players are going to improvise. They have to improvise because they're playmakers. All right. It's again, but it, it, it it's it's more than Roman. Greg Roman sucks on his own. He sucks on his own, and if you want. If you want, try telling me, oh, he doesn't have receivers. We don't have receivers. Well, he's a reason they don't come here. These are, he's, he's part of the reason they are choosing elsewhere. Look, OBJ looks at this game. He looks at this game and he's like, oh, yeah, Lamar, Yes. But he looks like Greg Roman. It scares him away. As simple as that. Hey. He watched the Cowboys. As well. He said the Cowboys went crazy. Of course they did. Look. The Cowboys obliterated the Minnesota Vikings. The 8-1 and one Minnesota Vikings. By 37 points. He likes that. He likes an offense that's going to maximize the quarterback and him as well. OBJ is not going to look at, at the Ravens as, unless it's a last resort. Well, it doesn't look like a last resort. Him right now, he's looking at the Giants and Cowboys. 
with with the shit show that John just put up and the lines, uh, he, he, he's definitely not going there. He's not coming back to to the Giants. But it looks like the Cowboys. Hey, he's supposed to meet with the Cowboys next week. He's he's supposed to meet with these teams next week. Not the Ravens. So again, I've been talking about the philosophy. Hey, so th there is a lot of Ravens fans who excuse the Ravens not creating an, an acceptable pass game because they believe the narrative that we are just going to run or can't run over everybody. Well, that's not true. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, that's not true. Because this is not the year 2000. Okay? The offense needs to shake up in philosophy and play calling. It will not keep up with the Bills or the Chiefs. Alright? It, it will not. It will simply not. In 2022, we cannot run our way into a freaking Super Bowl. You cannot. And and it, it's not even like the offense is run heavy. Because again, to me, being X heavy and one dimensional are two different things. Okay? Let me give you an example. The, the 49ers are run heavy. Be, be, because they run more. But when they're asked to pass the ball, they can pass the ball. Debo Samuel can actually catch the ball and then take it for 90 yards. He is schemed open for shit like that. Brennan Ayuk is schemed open, able to take it and, and make shit happen as well. If they want to pass the ball, they can. Greg Roman and this Ravens philosophy, it's run first, run second, one third, run fourth, run fifth. But then, when you cannot run the ball, it's over. The pass game, it, it's all a mess. Alright, it's hey, Lamar, it, it's the Lamar to Andrew show. Because again, the system benefits tight ends. Mark Andrews, if, if Mark Andrews was a wide receiver, it would be a whole a whole different story. But hey, Mark Andrews is a tight end. Lamar's favorite weapon. Hey, they're gonna go off. You're gonna look again. You have you had a play where hey, you have the receiver running the exact every receiver is running the exact same route. Like it's Madden. Look, this works in Madden. It can. I mean, even double slant sometimes is stopped in Madden. It's real. Uh, how do you expect it to work in real life? Again, in Madden, you can make up for receivers running into each other. For receivers being in the same area. In real life, you can't. But again, I look at some plays where it's like, hey, you have three receivers in the same area. And, and, and you can think to himself, where does Lamar throw the ball? Where does he throw? Because you have three guys in the same area. One other guy is just somewhere where it's impossible to reach. Or, or you can have all the, all the guys running in the exact same side of the field. And then Lamar forced to improvise something. Like, dude. It, it, it's impressive. It's impressive how Lamar makes this, uh, makes, made this shit work since 2019. It's impressive how Lamar went on and won MVP, an MVP with that offense. And again, like, these... Uh, these issues are like a tendency. These are tendency issues. 
These are issues you saw from Greg Roman since since he was offensive coordinator with the San Francisco 49ers in 2012 when he had Colin Kaepernick. And his bullshit led to Colin Kaepernick's downfall. The Bills. Bro, he ran the same offense under what? EJ Manuel? Dude. And again, his run. Oh, excellent running game mind. Bro, if I hear that one more time, bro, I'm going to pull up all the stats. If you're that good of a run game coordinator, why is your leading rusher the quarterback every single freaking year? Even in 2019, when Mark Ingram had 1,000 yards, Lamar had more yards than him. He still had, Lamar still had 1,100. Since that, no other running back came close to Mark Ingram. If it's that good, why is... Again... But then again, the run game regresses. The less Lamar runs, the run game regresses. How's that the case? Lamar this year decided, no. No, Roman. Uh, no more running 10 times a game. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to pass the ball, relying on running backs. Hey, he's doing business decisions. Lamar has a contract. He needs to get paid soon. And the run game is dysfunctional as hell. And, and, and then you, it's and then you're gonna have Kenyon Drake with a good game. Yeah, he's gonna have a good game there and here. But Kenyon Drake, he, he's he's not good enough. He's not good enough. He's not consistent enough to be a feature back. He's not consistent enough. But hey, Greg Roman, he's the run game coordinator, so he's supposed to make it work, right? No, it's not the case. Mark Ingram at his best. You're going to need Mark Ingram at his best. J.K. Dobbins at his best. Gus Edwards at his best. If you're that good of a run game coordinator, make it work. Or else, because again, Greg Roman sucks at passing. He sucks in the passing game. At least be good at one thing. If the run game is not working, you're useless. In here, bro. Greg Roman, you're useless in uh, on this team. I'm telling you that right now. I said what I said. But again, it's more than the Greg Roman issue. It's the Ravens front office willing to change their philosophy. Because again, Greg Roman can be fired tomorrow. You bring in his exact copy. You bring an exact clone. A guy who can run the ball, but then cannot pass the ball. Because again, if you believe, if you believe you can run your way into a Super Bowl, you're wrong. You're wrong, Bashadi. You're wrong, EDC. You're wrong. Because it has it hasn't been the case in the look at the past five years. Again, the Niners even the 49ers who can pass the ball, but they run the ball more. They went to the Super Bowl and they lost. Chiefs. Top 10 passing offense. Bills. Top 10 passing offense. Buccaneers. Top 10 passing offense. Packers. Top 10 passing offense. Who else? Who else really? Bengals last year, maybe? You, you, you can say. But, you know, the Bengals rely more on yak more than just passing the ball. Like, they, they rely on, on more like 5-yard pass to Chase and he goes 75 yards. But I'll say count them. <coughs> what they have in common is they were good at passing the ball. They were top 10 passing offenses. Top 10, top 15. And, and what's funny, you don't even need a top 10 passing offense. Like, have like top...